Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. I'm sick of hearing about lockdown. Anyway, and of course, it's lockdown in greyness with the climate. So, in order to sort of um, brighten up, lighten up my own personal lockdown, I'm, um, I'm painting a picture of the most important person in my life. I actually think he's the most important person in the whole history of the world. It is, of course, Jesus. Um, and I know what you're all thinking. Oh, well, no, it's not finished yet. I'm still working on it, okay? And one of the things, one of the reasons that I'm becoming aware of in all this is that Jesus has been in lockdown for ages. For how many years of most of the people in this town, in this city, my neighbours, in this whole country, for how many years have we been socially distancing ourselves from this amazing Jesus? I mean, I know we all learnt a bit of him when we were kids, but we've dropped it. We've moved on. We've got other interests. We're far too busy building houses, doing our jobs, raising families, watching football, playing computer games. Where does Jesus fit into all that? He doesn't fit into it. We have socially distanced ourselves from the most important, the truest, the most real human being who has ever lived. When I talk about Jesus being authentically true, a really true story, not a made-up story, I know that people doubt that. There are three things that make me think about the authenticity and the rock-hard truth about the Jesus story. First of all, Jesus was born as a semi-peasant. He was born not in a central place of the Roman Empire, but right out on the edge, some tiny village. He was Mr. Nobody. And all the things that people do to become really big people of history, he didn't do any of them. He didn't win any battles, didn't build any cities, didn't create any great music or architecture, never even wrote a single book. In all his life, he was Mr. Peasant, wandering around, right out on the edge. How on earth does this obscure, tiny, tiny man of history manage to become the giant of human history, just so well known, so everywhere, so important. Everybody knows a bit about him. I think that's almost miraculous, impossible to explain using conventional sort of historical methodology. Secondly, my second big thing that provokes me is that we have these amazing stories about him. They're called Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They're four Gospels. They're four almost like biographies. What do we think they are? Do we think that the first Christians who were frightened, men and women, just made up these stories? Well, some people clearly do. Actually, when you look at them, they are remarkably truthful. They're not made up stories. They are actually eyewitness stories. In other words, someone who saw him change water into wine, someone who was at the feeding of the 5,000, someone who heard him talking about love and truth and coming back to God, someone who actually experienced his real forgiveness, they have said, this is what he did. This is what he said. I was there. Not only that, but lots of other people who were around at the time have, have, have collaborated with that and said, yep, this is the true story. I have read, reread, taken apart, put back together these Gospels so many times. I am just continually impressed by their truthfulness. And thirdly, what about my own experience? I sort of became a proper Christian, I suppose I'd say, I don't know, years and years and years ago. 
And this Jesus has made such a difference to my life. I remember when I first became a Christian, I was a young man and I was really interested in, I wanted to have a great life and a full life. And I came across the word of Jesus when he said, I came that you might have life and life in all its fullness, life in abundance. And I thought, that is life for me. As I've gotten older, it is another amazing word of Jesus that seems now to be the essence of his appeal on my life. I love it when he said, come to me, everyone who's weary, who's heavy laden, who's struggling with a bit of depression, who's a bit lonely, who feels lost from time to time, who's conscious that their life is moving on and they're not... That's his word for me now. These words of Jesus, they're not just great sayings. They are. They are nuggets. Golden nuggets of wisdom, truth, that speak right to the human state and condition. That's my third big reason for being fascinated and gripped and wanting to find more and more about this Jesus. So, so why have we put Jesus into permanent lockdown? Why have we all, well, not all, but the vast bulk of us, why do we socially distance ourselves from him? In painting this picture, what I'm attempting to do is to actually Get closer to him. I don't want distance. I want closeness. I want to find out even more about this remarkable Jesus Christ. And perhaps I could invite you to do the same thing. Just to pick up one of these Gospels. To talk to someone who you know who's also a follower. Just to think in your own heart and mind, Jesus, I don't want to be socially distant. I want to get closer, to find out more, to bring you into my heart too. May I encourage you to take that amazing, closer up journey. Thank you.